Let's learn about another one of our ancestors, today on Antique Bottle Stories. Elmer Horton was born in 1863 in New Jersey. There's only one story written of him. It was written back in 1898 in a book called Biographical and Genealogical History of Newark, New Jersey. In this story, it says that there's a city called Hortonstown, New Jersey, that was named after his family, who were early pioneer settlers. Well, there's no city by that name anymore. I can't even find out which city used to be called Hortonstown. There's no information on Hortonstown, New Jersey on the internet anywhere. Elmer's dad was a Union Civil War veteran, and Elmer's mom died when Elmer was just about 18 months old or so. I'm not sure how many brothers and sisters he had, but I know that his dad did remarry. When Elmer was 17, he was working with his older brother Ezra at Celluloid Novelty Company. It looks like they made umbrellas and canes, and he worked there until he was 25. In 1883, he married Ella Clausen, and they had two girls. In 1888, he went into business with William Richardson under the business name Horton and Richardson, and they manufactured mineral waters and soda waters. Their first factory building was at 34 Warwick Street in Newark, which was here. Then, by the time they published that article in that book, the factory moved to 43 New York Avenue, which was on the corner of New York Avenue and McWhorter Street, and that's where they stayed until they went out of business. If the numbering's the same, it should be this building. It says, the plant is equipped with the latest, improved, and best facilities for the production of high-grade goods. It says, the business is conducted on sound principles, and the energy and enterprise of the owners have brought a well-deserved success. This book didn't have a backstory for his partner, William Richardson, though. And honestly, I don't think their partnership lasts much longer than this publication in 1898. Notice in 1897, they're both in the city directory under Horton and Richardson. But by 1900, it lists Horton under the mineral waters, and there's a couple William Richardsons, but none of them say Horton and Richardson, or mineral water for that matter. I checked a few other city directories, and it looks as though their partnership is dissolved at this point which puts this particular bottle in a much narrower window than previously thought. This bottle now dates between 1888, when the business began, and no later than 1900, when Richardson is no longer part of the business. In the 1905 census, Elmer Horton is manufacturing mineral waters. Same with the 1910 census. But by the 1920 census, he's now a foreman at a leather factory I thought maybe I picked up somebody else's census, but nope, because in the 1930 census, he's still at the leather factory. So sometime between 1910 and 1920, his business is done. So I looked around for a little bit more information between 1910 and 1920, and I was able to find a city directory for 1912, and he's still bottling, and if you look, there's a Eugene Horton in leatherworking. I don't know if that's a brother or a cousin, but that's probably how he got into the leatherworking. Not to mention that his dad actually was a tanner by trade as well. Then I found a 1917 city directory, and he's still bottling there. Notice 1917 is the first time we see what his company's name is without Richardson. Horton Soda Water Company. Unfortunately, there's not anything else I can find on that company name to give us any more clues. But now we can narrow the business closing somewhere between 1917 and 1920. But wait, there's one more clue. This 1920 census was taken January 2nd of that year, and he's already leatherworking. So we can narrow the business closing date even more, between 1917 and 1919. So this company was in business for roughly 30 years. That's not a bad run, I suppose. I wonder why it ended. 
did he sell it to somebody else? Or did he just not do well those last few years and he had to close the doors? So later, I see him in 1938, City Directory. He's about 75 years old and he's still working at the leather factory. But two years later, he's not working anymore. Him and his wife are elderly and they're living with their daughter and her husband, who also happens to be named Elmer. And one interesting thing about their son-in-law is that he's a prison guard. That's pretty cool. Another interesting fact on this census is that everyone was asked what their highest grade completed was in school, and Elmer Horton says fourth grade. So, Elmer Horton lives to be at least 77 years old. I'm not sure what happens to him after that. What's weird is I can't find a death record or a burial record for Elmer Horton or his wife. Maybe they're still alive. <laughs> the characteristics of this bottle fit this time frame. It's blown in a mold, it's blob top, and actually there are two unique irregularities inside the bottle where the glass actually juts out from the side. Here's one of them a little bit closer up. You can see the stretched bubbles at the top where the glass blower yanked the glass up to form the neck. It says registered and not to be sold which means that the business owned this bottle. When a customer bought this drink, they were supposed to take the bottle back to the business to be cleaned and reused. You were not allowed to keep or reuse the bottle for yourself. I mentioned it back in another video that these bottling companies would actually employ, I don't remember what their official title was, but basically bottle fetchers, where they would be sent out to local businesses and local homes and try to collect empty bottles and get them back to the correct businesses where they belonged. This bottle has a closure that I just learned about today. It's called a Baltimore loop seal. There's a little groove inside the mouth where a little flat rubber disc would pop in and out of that groove to close it. This closure was patented by William Painter, a Baltimore machine shop foreman in September of 1885. A big attraction of this closure, besides the sanitary benefit of the single use, was that it was very inexpensive. This closure was most popular from 1885 to the 1890s, but it did trickle into the early 1900s. This bottle was also blown into what was called a cup bottom mold. It has this shallow little base piece and then it would have a hinged mold that it was blown into. And where the mold closes, the glass would extrude into the cracks, making this seam on both sides of the bottle. See, here's mine. This mold was most popular for mouth blown bottles in the 1880s through the 1900s. So everything about this bottle fits the time frame of 1888 to about 1900. I'm actually super excited that it's that old. I always hold the bottles trying to imagine the person holding this exact bottle 120 years ago. It's not the same as imagining any person holding any bottle 100 years ago. They were holding this exact bottle that I'm holding. It's always such a cool feeling. It's like holding a fossil or something. Just holding a piece of history. It's just awesome, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little journey and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.